So this design has the plain one, which you can see on the screen, and also the ones that are draped around the hip region. And we're going to be learning how to draft all of that right away. Hey guys, in today's video, you're going to be needing your basic skirt. So the one we're starting with now is the one that does not have any drip whatsoever around the hip region. It does not have any drip. So now the first thing you're doing is to eliminate your dart because definitely you're making this design with a stretchy fabric. So you do not want to sew up the dart because it's going to be awkward when you sew up the dart with a stretchy fabric. So you're going ahead to eliminate the dart from the side. And to eliminate that from the side, you measure your dart excess and also the length of the dart by the side seam of your pattern. And when you do that, you rule it out like so, as I'm doing right now. And after ruling it out, you go ahead and cut it out with your scissors. So you're going to be cutting out that very part with your scissors. And by the time you're done doing this, you've eliminated the dart. So right now, this pattern is without dart and we are free to do whatever we want to do. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do want to subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon so you'll be the very first person to know when I post new videos like this. And also share these videos to other platforms where they'll be needed. So now, on my knee line, you can decide to extend yours if you can walk with it. Okay, but on the knee line, preferably for everyone, on my knee line, I'm going to be cutting from the hem of my skirt all the way to the hem line. Now, if you want yours to be so, you know, like the one on the mannequin, please, that's one on the mannequin. They used something like a pin or a peg to hold it at the back because I'm very sure it would be difficult for someone to walk on it like that. But if you want yours to be that way, you can come down three inches after your knee line. So then on the knee line, I went ahead to slash open this pattern like so. I added a fresh pattern paper underneath so I can open it up. Now we are working on the one where the A-line effect isn't that overboard. It's just minimal like the one we are seeing right now. So then I went ahead to open it up like so. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're keeping the grain line of your center front intact so that it does not turn to a bias. And you don't have any problem cutting it all. When you're done sewing, it's not going to be looking awkward because the gray line must have been altered. So you have to keep your center front straight. Then I'm going to have to hold my center front down before I decide how much spread I'm going to be having by the side. Also consider the amount of fabric you have before you slash and spread because the amount of fabric you have will determine how much fullness you're going to be having. Okay. So now I'm opening it up like so, just as if we are dealing with an A-line, like we want to get an A-line. So that is what I'm doing right now. I went ahead to tape all this down and this is what it looks like. I also go ahead to add extra pattern paper to close up every opening because I don't know where I might be cutting very soon. So I want to make sure everywhere is closed all the openings are closed, so my pattern is intact. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to cut off all the excess papers that are hanging around, okay? Now, on my waistline, I went in by 0 0.25 inches, okay? So when you mark 2 point 0, 0 0.25 inches on your waistline, you're going to be connecting that 0 0.25 inches to your knee line or to wherever it is you started opening up for the A-line effect from. So for the sake of this tutorial, I started from my knee line. And I'm going to be connecting that 0 0.25 inches to my knee line like so. So 
So I'll use my marker to make it visible so that you guys can see it clearly. Like so. So at this point, this is what you should be having. And now, remember this part of it is the A-line effect. That's what I'm trying to explain. So we're going to be adding additional pattern papers if you wish for your A-line to be overflowing. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be stopping here. So the next thing we're going to do is to increase the hem because you want it to flow when you wear it on the floor. You don't want it to stop at the ankle length, which your basic skirt stopped at. So you have to be adding more inches to the length apart from your basic skirt length which stopped at the ankle you have to be adding more to the length so right now i'm adding fresh pattern paper and i'm going to be increasing the length right now i'm going ahead to add more inches to it so adding of more inches is left for you how much you want it to flow okay and also considering your fabric how much you want it to flow so for the sake of this tutorial i'll just go ahead to add extra six inches from my ankle length i'm adding extra six inches so you can decide to add whatever it is just put your tape at your waist and let it fall and then see what measurement you have from your waistline down and at that point you should know what to add so when you add the number of inches you want you want to start from your knee line and check how many for this tutorial we have 23 then from your knee line the 23 is going to be taken all the way around so you can get that roundish curvy hem you take the 23 inches all the way around so you can get that roundish curvy hem so this one is off then i'll cut some extra pattern paper and fix in there so it aligns with the hem also And then I'm going to be joining all the dotted lines together. And of course, with my scissors, okay, I'll extend this line also. Then I'll go in with my scissors and cut out the excesses. So we are left with our main pattern. So by the time you cut it out, this is what you're having. And you're also going to be cutting out from here, like so. So now that you have separated this part from this other part, okay, let's say part A from part B. Now you're also going to slash and spread the a all right so what i'm trying to say here is if you want a more thinner look at your leg region you can come down by three inches from your knee but be very sure that you won't be able to walk properly because of the back except the front is going to give you you're going to slash and spread the front very well for all the fullness you need to walk properly so you can get it downwards three inches after the knee line then you slash and spread very well for the front, which we are going to do now, so you'll be able to walk properly, okay? So we set that aside, and we are going to work on this. Now, if you look at the picture on the top of the screen, you find out that that very cutout in front is kind of, it's full. It has added fullness. It's not just at the basic. So to get the added fullness, we are going to be slashing and spreading this very particular pattern and also the added fullness is what is going to help you to work properly no matter how thin you are going to come down from your knee line so now it's very simple you're just going to be cutting open and you slash and spread like this this is the way you're going to place it on your fabric if you want to cut it now remember you're cutting the center front on fold so this is the way you're going to place it on your fabric just like this 
you cut this one, slash and spread it like so. Cut number part A, then part B separately, and you join by the side. That fullness at the center is going to help when you join both sides so that the other one is overflowing and you're not seeing the side seam. I hope that is explainable. So for the back, which is totally very simple, the back is just a basic A-line skirt following some measurements you used from the back. Firstly, we are going to be eliminating, following, sorry, some measurements you used for the front. Firstly, we are going to be eliminating the waist darts just like we did for the front. To the back also, we are going to be eliminating the waist darts. So we'll go ahead and cut it off. I also increased the length of the back to align with that of the front. Okay. I also increased the length of the back to align with that of the front. And we are going to be cutting open to get our A-line effect. Now remember I said if you want a thinner look, come down from your knee from your knee line by let's say three inches okay you have a very thinner look that very you know thinner look before you have the a line or the mermaid effect but for this tutorial i'm starting from the knee line because i know basically everyone is going to be everyone is likely to start from the knee line but if you want a thinner look you can come down three inches then you spread out that very front effect very well that draped front effects very well spread it out well so you can be able to walk now because we used knee line for the front also at the back we are going to be using the knee line and we are opening it up just like um our a line and that's what i'm doing right now So once you're done doing this, you just have to cut off all the excesses. After you must have taken the measurement for the length to get that rounded hemline, you're going to cut off all the excesses. So right now I'm going ahead to cut off all the excesses. Do not forget if you want a thinner look, come down three inches from your knee line. But if you're comfortable with leaving it the way it is, just as it's going on in this video now, then you can start from the knee line to open up for your A line effect. So this is all for the back, and I'm going to be placing the front and back together so you guys can see what it actually looks like. So here is the front, the part where you're slashing and spreading, the center, you, the center front where you're going to be cutting on fold. So this is the side where you're going to be attaching to it. Do not forget, I said, by the time you open it up, that fullness at the center will fall on top of the stitch you made for the joining of that front. So you're not going to be seeing the joining. When you open it up, that excess is going to overflow of the joining by the both sides of the front so you're not going to notice that it was joined at that very side of the front so this is the front and the back for this design without drapes so we're going ahead now to draft the one that has drape at the hip region so let's head straight to that one right away you be doing your basic body skirt front also, just like we had for the other one, I'm going to be separating it. I'm going to be cutting out. I'm going to be cutting it into two, so we just have one side of it to make it easier for us. I wanted to use the full, but it's still the same thing. So let's just separate it and use one side of it.
So now we have our pattern. We are going ahead now to close the dart. The other one, we eliminated the dart. For here, we are not going to eliminate the dart. We are closing it up. Because of course, we'll be needing it in this design. Now, there's something about drapes. If you're draping, use a fabric that has stretch. If you're going to be using an Ankara to drape, then as you're draping, you're going to be ironing before you even sew. You're folding it in, you're ironing it out, and you're using your pattern to check if your measurement is in alignment with the drapes you have made. So it's not baggy. Many of you have complained that your drapes are always baggy after you've sewn it. If your fabric is not stretchy, as you're draping, be ironing out the pleats and check your pattern if it is in alignment so the fabric or your drapes are not bigger than your actual pattern. So now this is my line for forming the drapes. Whatever you're using at the side, divide it into two and that is what you're going to use for the center front. I'm going ahead now to draw in the style lines for the drape. Please pay close attention because this very one has some kind of technicalities in it. So now after doing this, the next thing you're going to do is to mark 0 0.25 inches also at your waistline at the center front region. And from there, you're going to be connecting the line to your knee line, like so, just as we did to the front. So remember this very one, the A-line is, is exaggerated, is overflowing. So you have to, if you want something like this, you have to slash and spread that your A-line effect so wide. You have to open it up and trust me this is going to take a whole lot of fabric so you don't go and buy four yards of fabric and say you're using it to sew exactly something like this it's not going to work this hair is going to take a whole lot of fabric a whole lot so don't collect four yards from someone or even six years to say you want to achieve this effect maybe six years will go a long way to give you this but the four yards is not going to do it please so you're going to be opening this up very much if you want this very draped effect for this draped effect you need a whole lot of fabric so i haven't done that this is what we're having right now and before you cut this out it will be nice that you trace out this very part i'm also going to be showing you guys where i'm tracing out right now so i'm going to be tracing out this whole part like this the reason why i'm tracing this out is to be on the safer side because i can decide to do the side drapes and place the middle one on top of it then put my appliques or i can decide to put the middle the center front underneath and the side on top of it whichever way i'm on the safer side so it is better you trace it out and not cut it out completely It's also going to give your design a very professional look other than having that joining effect okay you're not going to have any you're not going to have any joining effect everything is going to come out straight from the waistline all the way down and you understand what i'm saying as we go ahead so i'm gonna have to trace this out please as you're tracing be labeling so you know which one you're going to be attaching to which side and where it's going to be facing where and all that so you don't get confused or you don't misplace the patterns so i'm labeling so i will be able to know where i'm going to be fixing on which one and not misplace my patterns okay Since I've done this now, I'll go ahead to cut this out, like so. And then I'll go ahead to use my tape to join this together. As you can see now, this is also starting from the waist. So now whatever we're doing with that pattern is going to also start from the waist. That is the essence of that um, tracing out that we did. Now we'll go ahead to start slashing and spreading this very one.
so as you are doing this be sure you don't there is none of your pattern that is missing if you if any of your pattern is missing it's going to affect your results so much be sure that no pattern is missing make sure you use your tip to hold everything down so well so none of your patterns are missing please so i'm going ahead now to slash and spread and of course we'll be slashing and spreading this on a fresh pattern paper So I'll go ahead to put a fresh pattern paper underneath and I'll spread this out on it like so. So I'll go ahead now and use my tape and hold all this down. I'm going to hold everything down in place properly so that nothing is moving around. And so having held it down with my tape, I'll go ahead now to start closing it up like so. Since you're forming drapes and not pleats, if you're forming pleats, this is what you should do. But then if you're forming drapes, you want to take the measurements of the original pattern before you slashed and spread then you run a loose stitch on your fabric after you've slashed and spread then gather that very part where you run your loose stitch to the number of inches you measured out as your original pattern please i hope you understand which means you're going to be taking the measurement before you slash and spread that is if you're going to be using drips so that by the time you slash and spread you run a loose stitch on that very part. You gather it into the number of inches you measured on your original pattern and then stitch it down. But if you're using pleats, there's no need taking the original measurements. You're just going to be slashing and spreading it. And by the time you do this and cut it off, then open it up on your fabric. You're, you'll be using your pen or your chalk to mark where you should be sewing up and where you're not supposed to be folding in and all that. I hope that's understandable. So now I'm going ahead here to form the pleats like so. So I haven't done this now. This is what we are having. Go ahead to open it up so you guys can see it. Now I'll cut off all the excesses which we are not needing. To avoid that very baggy effect, I've said it before, if you're using a very strong, which you're not supposed to use anything that, any fabric that is not stretchy should not be used for this design. Your fabric has to be stretchy. And to get a very close fit of this draped effect, you should reduce your actual measurement by one inch. Okay, reduce your actual measurement by one inch. Then if your fabric is too stretchy, you can reduce it by two inches. I hope that's okay. So this is what we're having right now. And we're not done. We're also going to be slashing and spreading the very center one. This very one. We're going to be slashing and spreading. So look at what I was saying then. We're going to be slashing and spreading this very one. And for this one, we're not just slashing and spreading. We're cutting open. We're not cutting two like the first one we did that has no drapes. We are cutting open everything. We are going to be cutting open. Now, these very cuts should start from down to the top. But because I'm trying to economize my paper, I am not cutting from down to the top. But please, let your cutting, let your slash and spread start from down to the top. Okay? It has to start from down to the top. So here we are cutting it open because we are also going to be adding fullness to this one. And then I'll go ahead to get a fresh pattern paper, lay it underneath, 
and spread it out like so. So now having done that, I'm going ahead to fold it in to also form pleats or drapes, whichever one, for the center also. At this point, you have to be very artistic because by the time you've formed your drapes at the waistline, you can also do some hand stitching all the way to the very place where you stopped your pleats by the sides. You can do some hand stitching there so you know pull that part together and let the whole thing fall from the very part where you stopped your side drips okay like this very side where we stopped um the tracing you can do some hand tacking there to hold the fabric together just a little not so much just a little and then let it fall all the way down let it flow rather all the way down from that point so this is what it looks like you can decide to fix this on top of it or you can decide to put the center front you can decide to put this on top of it or you can decide to put the center on top of it and then use some applique to cover it up do not forget that the very side please you're so you're cutting it out and you're in two so you're going to be sewing the two together depending on how you want to sew it so if you're putting this on top you have to use appliques to cover it up okay 